with a gasoline that starts in Austin, San Diego. And this is a phenomenal air. Just give me your hand. My hand. I don't know if that was I want to welcome you once again for being here. Um, the many miles we've traveled here on the road, but also the sole miles it takes to come to this place. Um, I want to start our time off with a bit of a ceremony. Um, as you are able and as you are comfortable, perhaps looking to your left, to your right, um, and finding and meeting the eyes of the people that you are standing with or sitting with, that you are here present on this space today. And don't just pretend to look at them, really look at them. See them in the eyes. Um, allow yourself to be in the midst of others as a reminder that once again, you don't have to do the grief journey alone, that you do this in a collective, in a community. Now, as you meet the eyes of somebody else, I'm going to offer a reading of the 23rd Psalm, and the 23rd Psalm is important for a number of reasons, but for one particular reason, it's the Psalm that I shared often with Gina, uh, especially toward the end of her life, when she became a little bit less conversant. Um, so as I read that, I invite you to perhaps hold a hand um, as you are comfortable, perhaps embracing arms as you are comfortable, um, if it's possible, almost collecting a, um, almost like a continuum, continuum of humanity to remind yourself that you are here not by yourself, but with others. Now, if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. You can stare off into the beauty that is here. Whatever allows you to find a way to be present in this moment, putting all of the stuff from yesterday yesterday and putting all the stuff tomorrow tomorrow and coming fully present here and now as I read the words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, shall not be in one. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. When I'm thirsty, he leads me beside still waters. And in those moments, he restores my soul. He leads me down paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. For your rod, your staff, they comfort me. They remind me of how you will sustain me and protect me from myself. You prepare a table before me in the presence of those who wish to harm. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those are the words that we shared or that I was able to share with Gina over and over and over again. And again, as words and conversation declined, the silence became all the more. So I invite us now that we might allow those words to fall into us just as they fell into Gina toward the end of her life. So take a few moments to collect yourself, to allow yourself the luxury of being here, and I'll close us with a word of prayer in just a moment. Let's pray. Spirit who dwells in this place, who dwells in the hearts of those here, come and be with us. Walk with us and tend to us in this time, that as we share memories and reflect on a life well lived, that you would connect us with one another, that you would come and companion us through our respective grief journeys. So thank you for loving us today. Thank you for Gina's life. Thank you for our part in Gina's life and her part in ours. Bless us, watch over us, give us your peace today. Pray this in your name. Amen. Bless you and take care.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Lieutenant Commander Holly Schaffner, and I am retired Coast Guard. It is my honor to share a bit about my friend, Gina, and her military life. Before we get into who World War II U.S. Coast Guard spar Elizabeth Gina Fishley was, I want to extend my heartfelt condolences to the Fishley family on the loss of their matriarch. matriarch. Miss Gina, as many of us called her, lived life to its fullest at 100 years young. She certainly had a great life and was an example of living with positivity, grace, humor, and love, a good role model for how we can all live our own lives. First, for those that may not know what SPAR means, it's an acronym for women who served in World War II. The Navy had waves, the Army had wax, and the U.S. Coast Guard had SPARs, which means Semper Paratus, always ready. At the beginning of World War II, there were no women in the Coast Guard. That changed by late 1942. The Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor and German U-boats torpedoed American ships. The United States needed more men at sea. Congress passed a law allowing women to replace Coast Guard men uh, working at stateside jobs so that the men could go to sea. By the war's end, 11,000 women swore an oath to serve and become spars. Some of the women had brothers who couldn't serve, others sought adventure, and in Miss Gina's case, she saw a recruiting poster of Uncle Sam saying, we want you, and she took that literally. In January of 1943 in Los Angeles, Elizabeth Gina McCrees raised her right hand and took an oath and took an oath to support the Constitution of the United States and defend her country. She was just 19 years old and I still laugh every time I hear her telling the story. Excited about her decision, she went home and told her mother that she'd be leaving for boot camp and her mother asked, what suitcase can I get for you? Gina went to boot camp in Sheep's Head Bay, New York, and then to her A school to become a storekeeper. In her A school class, 125 spars started, and she was one of 19 who graduated. As a seaman first class, she was assigned to the district in Seattle, Washington, and did accounting and payroll. I heard stories over the eight years that we were friends, and from what I gathered, she enjoyed Seattle and meeting new people. When the war ended in 1945, her supervisor told her there was no money to keep her on active duty, and she was released from the Coast Guard in 1946. She told me for many years that she would have served longer if the Coast Guard had allowed her to. After she was released from the Coast Guard, she got married to Ed and had three amazing children who are here today, Jerry, Tracy, and Charlene. That leads me to when I met Gina. It was 2016 and I got a call from the Veterans Museum in Balboa Park from the events director. She says, Holly, you're not gonna believe this. Today, we had a spar in the museum. Even she knew the meaning, that meeting a spar was so very special. I got Gina's phone number, called her, and our friendship blossomed from there. As director of public relations for Honor Flight San Diego, I prop promptly asked her if she wanted to go on her honor flight where we were honoring World War II veterans for their service and sacrifice. That trip opened up opportunities for the next eight years. We don't have enough time today to share all the memories and experiences we've had over the years, but after the honor flight, we did so much together. We had meals, visits to Sector San Diego for ceremonies and women's leadership initiative events. She was a VIP in the Coronado Fourth of July parade, and I surprised her with a plaque on the Alpine Veterans Wall of Honor. For many of her birthdays, she had drive-by parties, she received hundreds of cards and letters and challenge coins from all over the country, including from many commandants and many Master Chief Petty Officers of the Coast Guard. For her 100th birthday, just a few months ago, the Coast Guard went big with a birthday celebration that included a helicopter flyover and something that made national news as she was finally re-enlisted into the Coast Guard. The last time I visited Gina, she was still talking about her birthday and the day that she re-enlisted back into the Coast Guard. She even asked me to check into why she hasn't received her paycheck and that re-enlistment bonus <laughs> that Chief Ferrios promised her. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. One of the highlights of our time together was in 2022 when she and I traveled cross-country to attend the Commandant's Change of Command ceremony. 
Miss Gina was the only World War II veteran there and the only World War II spar to witness history as she saw the first female service chief assume command of any branch in the military. Miss Gina was always humble about her service. Sorry. Oops, oh, sorry. I'm referring to something. Sorry. Miss Gina was always humble about her service. And we did our best that weekend to let her know that Admiral Fagan's history-making moment was from the trails that Gina had blazed in 1943. As recent as January of this year, she still told me about all that that was one of her favorite all-time trips when she met Admiral Fagan. I have a picture of the two of them sitting and laughing like they were old friends when Admiral Fagan was supposed to be in a receiving line. In the picture, Gina has her arm around Admiral Fagan and if I could insert a bubble into what Gina is saying, I'm sure that she's telling her, now, Admiral, here's how you need to run the Coast Guard. <laughs> On that trip to Washington, D.C., we went to the Military Women's Memorial for a special tour. Not only did she get to ring the Coast Guard Cutter Spars bell, but she was recognized as a living legend in a special ceremony. I could share 100 fun facts about Miss Gina, and here's just one. The next time you're in the Military Women's Memorial in Arlington, Virginia, please visit the SPAR exhibit. Unbeknownst to Gina, the picture of her and her fellow SoCal SPARs has been there since the memorial opened 27 years ago. Another fun fact is that she left from San Diego to go by train to New York for boot camp. There's a picture of Miss Gina in Sector San Diego's galley as well. Gina loved the Coast Guard and the Coast Guard loved her. In January for her 100th birthday, she received personal letters and cards from the highest levels of the Coast Guard, including the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Coast Guard. When Master Chief Jones heard of the news of Gina's death, he sent this statement for me to read today. At 19 years old, Gina embodied the desire to serve and our core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. Her actions, like the actions of the other SPARs who volunteered to serve our country when they were needed most, paved the way for the women who lead our service today. Her continued support of our workforce made her a beloved member of the Coast Guard community in Southern California. On behalf of the entire Coast Guard family, thank you to Gina's family for sharing her with us. Miss Gina was special to other Coast Guard men and women as well. The ladies she called her Coast Guard girls. Some are here today, Keith Berrios, who is part of her honor guard, Francesca's the videographer, and some who couldn't make it today, but we'll see our video later. Master Chief Diane Bucci, Master Chief Nina Ciccinelli, and Petty Officer Kamika Saldana, who I see there in the back as well. <clears throat> Master Chief Bucci asked me to read this. Miss Gina, your courage and patriotism opened the doors for millions of women to serve our country. We are forever thankful. I will miss your wit, humor, and sarcasm, but most of all, I will miss your laugh. You're forever in my heart. And though Master Chief Diane Bucci is married to another Master Chief named Rocky, Rocky was truly Gina's boyfriend. <laughs> I believe that when Rocky told her that he planned to come to San Diego for her 100th birthday, that it put an increased pep in her step to see him. One of our many FaceTime calls with the Buccis, Gina and Rocky blew each other kisses as they often did. And when she asked Rocky about his trip to San Diego, she said, you're not bringing that other woman with you, are you? <laughs> I laughed and I said, Gina, you realize that his right, wife is sitting right next to him, right? <laughs> that was Gina, funny, witty, spunky, and fun. Here's what Rocky sent to me for today. Even though I only met you in 2022, our weekend together in DC was one of the best of my life. I will miss you, my forever girlfriend. Hugs and kisses, Rocky. As we conclude the service, I would like to end my remarks with letting the Fishley family know that Gina's Coast Guard family, Gina's Honor Flight family, and her Coast Guard girls are here for you. It was our honor to know her and thank you for sharing her with us. We hope that she's at peace and having the time of her life as she's reunited with Ed. For me personally, Gina was my hero. And all of my military sisters stand on her shoulders for opening the doors that allowed us to serve. It did not go unnoticed that, the, that this, our favorite spar, left us on International Women's Day, a day to celebrate our women trailblazers. 
Thank you for your service, Miss Gina. May you rest in peace and have fair winds and following seas in heaven. Please know that the men and women of the U.S. Coast Guard stand the watch. Number for Otis. As a tribute to World War II U.S. Coast Guard veteran Gina Fishley's service, Sector San Diego will be conducting a flyover, which you'll hear shortly. Actually, you may hear it coming in right now. And now active duty Coast Guard members would like to present final honors. Commander Moy Toy, Sector San Diego, Deputy Sector Commander, will lead the honors. All personnel in uniform shall render appropriate salutes during the playing of taps. Oh, and I hear it, I hear it uh, yeah. right behind me. I hear it's still good. <laughs> there it is right there. <laughs> This is a tribute to Gina for her service in, in the Coast Guard. He's looking out. He is. I'm sure she's smiling now. Oh, this one looks good. So she stopped her out of LA. Out of the Sector San Diego. Commander Moytoy, Sector San Diego, Deputy Commander, will lead the honors. All personnel in uniform shall render appropriate salutes when the playing of taps. And Trumpeter Corey Wickline will end the service with taps and then the Coast Guard service song, Semper Paratus.